So now we're going to talk about how to take raster data and put it into a spreadsheet so that we can visualize it using a relatively simple and relatively common tool. The data we have, we've gathered from a contour plot. Here's a contour plot of some rainfall data that should look familiar to you. And we've divided that contour up into a number of grids. And then for each of those grids, we've recorded some values representing um, those values representing the rainfall or an interpolation of the rainfall for that grid area. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all this data. It's nicely organized now in rows and columns. And so that data can easily be entered into data on a spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet I'm going to use here, I'm going to actually use uh, Google Sheets as a spreadsheet although you can do similar processes in other spreadsheets such as Microsoft Excel, although the processes might be a little different for visualization. But let's take a look here at how we're going to handle this in Google Sheets. So first I have the data, and what I'm going to need to do is, re is recognize that I have rows and columns here in the spreadsheet, and in each of those rows and columns I can start entering the data values. For example, here in the upper left-hand corner I have the value 4.75. Okay and I can enter each value in succession in the appropriate row and column. Okay, as I complete one column, I can move over and do the next one. And basically I'm matching the data between that I read and recorded and putting it, entering it into my spreadsheet. Now, this obviously fits into our more accuracy equals more work. The more data points that you've gathered, the finer the resolution you have, the more data points you're going to need to enter. For example, if we chose a resolution of smaller grid points and more data points, and I haven't actually recorded all these values, but if we had those, we would have many more values to enter into our spreadsheet. Well, now that you have the spreadsheet values, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. I've entered all the data in already. Here's the full data on the screen. <coughs> so all the data points here. Let's go ahead and see if we can visualize this. Now, it's just numbers, and you can kind of get a sense for where there's higher numbers and lower numbers, but it's hard to see with just the numbers. However, there's a few things that we can do. Now that the computer has numbers identified, what we can do is we can take each of those numbers and put a color along with them. So here's what I'm going to do first. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to make this look a little bit more like a grid. And there's a simple way we can do that. I'm going to click at the top of the screen at the, on the column A, the letter A. Click here. And then click here on the letter I so I've selected the entire piece. When I do so, if I then go over and hover here right between the I and the J, when I do so, you'll see there's this little arrow that appears. And that arrow allows me to resize the columns. If I click and drag, I'm going to make this column I so it's roughly the same width as it is height. And when I let go, it will resize all of my values here. Now notice, they're still a little bit thicker. I need to decide now whether or not it's important for me to see the data values or whether it's more important for me to make this a little closer to square. I'm a little closer to square there. I'm now obscuring some of my data values. Okay, but now that I have this data and I've put it into something that's a little closer to a square grid, now I'm going to want to visualize it. We're going to ask the spreadsheet to help us by coloring each one of these with a color based on the value. So I'm going to click here on the lower right hand corner and hold down shift as I click in the upper left hand corner to select all of the data. So I want to only apply these rules to the data. And then I'm going to look for what's called conditional formatting. On, in Google Sheets, it's under this button that says Format. And there's a thing down here that says Conditional Formatting. So if I click on that, what conditional formatting means is that we are going to format the cell, do something special to the cell, that de depending on what value is in the cell. Over here on the right-hand side, you'll see conditional format rules. And there's either single color or color scale. Well, it's made pretty easy for us. We're going to click on Color Scale. 
and then it will give us some options for color scale to choose. The default color scale is sort of interesting, but it's all kind of different shades of green. I'm going to actually choose some sort of scale that uses maybe a variation in colors. Here it's green to yellow to red. Okay, and when I do so, notice that I now have color values that align with the different values that I've input into my spreadsheet. And it does something where it interpolates that the high red color corresponds to my highest value, the darker green color corresponds to my lowest value, and then I get a range of values in between that are a mix of sort of greenish yellow and sort of an orange color in between the yellow and the red. And if I wanted to, I could play around with the minimum and maximum values. But the goal here has been more or less accomplished. I now have a grid that's visualizing the values that we have of the precipitation. Notice I can compare that picture to my original sort of colorization picture to my original value there. And you can see some of the same shapes. There's this sort of green triangle here in the middle. Okay, these values are blue up here, but you can sort of see where there's those lower values up at the top, and then the high values here on the right side, and the also high values here on the left side. So you can begin to see those shapes. Now that's not particularly impressive, it's kind of blocky. All right, well how would we make that picture better? Well, more accuracy equals more work. If we took our data with a finer resolution and entered all that data in, we would get a much better picture.